All right, next one in the shop. I'll uh, I'll show you why that hood's up here in a minute, but got a uh, Jeep CJ in here. I'm not really sure on era CJ5 or something like that. I'm not a huge huge Jeep guy, but um, pretty cool rig in here. Needs some shock uh, shock tuning help. So this is a linked a four linked rear, three linked front Jeep. Um, it's got set up with so King 2.0. Uh, remote resi coilovers um, it's got sway bars front and rear you see that see the links in there no bump stops um, does have limit straps front we got a freight sway bar in the front Let's see if we can see the upper uh, three link mount there you go there's your third link up top for the front so customers having some uh it's just not performing how it should be um, I'm going to get take this thing out to the dunes. That's kind of going to be my first step. I got to take this out to the dunes, run it through some sections, get a better baseline and feeling for uh, what exactly it's doing so I know exactly where it's at. And uh, from there, get the shocks pulled off, figure out what they have for valving, and probably going to need to make a spring, uh, spring rate adjustment on this. And uh, yeah, get this thing all set up and uh, floating on the dunes. So this thing... Uh Motor wise, this is what the hood's up for. I wanted to show you guys this. Pretty dope setup, twin turboed, LS swapped. Um, so, no lack, definitely not a lack of power with this thing, um, but that's kind of the situation. Is uh, This is a really nice Jeep, lots of nice stuff, but the suspension is not allowing this Jeep to perform as it should. So, that is what this thing is here for, and uh, we're going to get this thing floating and hopefully. Uh, the owner will be able to take more advantage of uh, his motor package that he's got in this thing. This is a Steve Morris engine, um, so right out of Muskegon, not too far from the dunes. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, not doubtful it makes plenty of horsepower, so we're not doing anything with that. I just wanted the hood up to uh, show you guys and let uh, some people appreciate this.
actually looking for. I don't have somebody that's actually able to like track me um, all the way through the section and get a nice side shot. So um, set up set up a little tripod and I was able to get enough. Uh, this little like whoop section right in here. Uh, kind of it's good enough to uh, get me kind of what I'm looking for as far as uh, video and being able to slow it down and then along with the feeling ready to go back and make some shock changes and come back out with this thing and see what we can do. So. this jeep today gonna try to get this uh finished up get these uh shocks done i've already made some adjustments i've already been out in the dunes quite a bit with this thing and now i'm to a point uh still need a little bit more uh in the rear i need to pull these rear shocks off i am going to try um some more rebound valving and then also i think try changing the upper spring, because um, I have one here, this is a 150 pound spring. I am gonna try putting a 100 pound on there. I'm gonna take 50 pounds out of that upper spring and see if I can get a little bit smoother transition and a little softer ride over some of the chattery bumps. It's kind of what I'm going for with that. So we'll know more once I get those ripped off. I gotta tear them apart, new valve stacks inside, put them back together, new springs, and uh, go hit the dunes again. So that's what we're gonna get going on.
Well, I'm getting ready to fire this thing up and uh, head out to the dunes. I got the uh, rear shocks revalved and back on. I also tried changing the uh, spring rate. This was a 150 pound spring. I uh, had a 100. I'm kind of curious what a 100 pound spring on there is kind of going to do um, with the valve changes. So threw that on there already sitting a little lower than I'd like. And I already have as much preload in there as I'd want. So I'm going to go out and try it anyway. I already kind of think I'm going to be putting that 150 pound spring on there, but I like to just kind of verify and make sure sometimes it uh, surprises me. Maybe it'll do better than I'm expecting, but that's uh, kind of what I got to do. Fire this thing up, head out to the dunes, go take it for test and uh, see if we're done or see if I got to maybe put that other spring back on. But let's uh, fire it up and uh, hit the dunes. Jeep dialed in, been out to the dunes a couple times, done a couple valve changes. Um, I did try that last time, switching this spring from a 150-pound uh, spring to a 100. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is actually change that spring back. I'm going to put the 150 back in there. As you can see, the ride height, I don't know actually if you can see it, but the ride height, it's a little droopy in the rear. And I've already put a ton of preload into it, more than I like. Um, so I'm actually going to go back to the 150 pound spring and get this thing a little bit more leveled out and uh i think the 150 is where it needs to be so uh we're gonna get that kind of wrapped up the main thing though i want to show you this thing um i got this on the books to be coming back here in the spring um there's a couple things to address that are kind of preventing us from getting the most out of this setup um and the main one right here i'll show you is these shock mounts and the way that they're on the axle so with these shock mounts uh, this way versus allowing the, uni the, the rod end here to be this way, the bolt going this way versus this way, it doesn't actually allow that uh, bearing in there to pivot. Um, it's pivoting uh, side to side, and they do not have as much angle when you mount them like that. So this Jeep with... The shocks are mounted at a pretty good angle backwards. Um, it's definitely better to be 90 degrees to your uh, your link bars, but obviously there's a seat in here, and to make them fit, that's where they put them. Um, still works. It's just not the most ideal. And so the problem that that's causing with this style mount is this shock is already tilted back quite a bit, and as this shock comes up to bump, it's binding right here on this rod end and in that tab. So that side is actually bent. Um, the rod, the whole rod end itself is bent. And I think I have a picture of it when I was had it out. I can put it in here. So that is actually what's stopping our suspension travel from coming up. You can see these little rubber, maybe, can you see them? Right in there. That's the little rubber bumper stopper. I slid those up before I took it out to see what the stroke's doing. And we are binding right there. So we're binding with like two to two and a half inches of up travel yet. So, and like I said, it's mainly this side actually. This side's a lot closer. And obviously it's been an issue because actually on this side, somebody's come in and cut this upper shock mount shorter 
and there's actually cuts in that rod end itself. So same thing, there's the rubber, the rubber bumper right there. We got all of this shock shaft below it that that shock is actually not binding. So like right now from ride height, we've got maybe like four inches of up travel and it should have about six to seven. So quite a bit to gain on there. The front is cycling a lot better. Um, so yeah, nonetheless, I wanted to show you that to you. Uh, maybe if you got, if you have some sort of issue like that, you definitely want those lower rods of the shock mounted like this. See how that, uh, the bolt is going the opposite way and that bearing that's in there. Now the front is mounted much more one-to-one -one and a 90 degrees. So that one actually wouldn't matter if it was turned but that's how the rear should be. So we have plans on this coming back in the spring. I don't have the availability of the time to get to this right now. Um, the dune season for these people are is over anyway, so they're not going to be back out in the sand until next year, but that will be coming back. We'll be fixing all that and uh, should be making this thing um, a lot better than what it was when it started and came in here. So a lot of times with the shocks tuning stuff, it doesn't necessarily just come down to the shocks. Um, I'm taking a look at everything. I'm looking at setup, um, how the shocks are mounted, you know, trying, cause oftentimes there's issues elsewhere. And like with this, the way that that's working, what's actually happening right now is the front has about seven inches of travel up in the front. So we're going over the front can handle a lot more than what the rear can. The rear's only got four inches of up travel. So the front's going over stuff right now, pretty good and handling it. And then what happens is the rear comes behind and not having that same travel, going through the same bumps and whoops, it's binding and unsettling the suspension and not letting it work as it should. So And then giving us these kind of bucking bucking rides. So I've done what I can to make it better for now and for the beginning of part of next year. Um, but that issue right there is going to get us leaps and bounds ahead. Like I said, two, two inches of up travel was huge. Um, you know, in my opinion... And, any inch that you can get up travel, it's worth doing the work to make it happen. So that's kind of where we're at in this Jeep. Um, just some more shot tuning stuff, just kind of things like that. So yeah, thanks for watching as always. And we'll come at you with another one.